Well, hello again and welcome to another episode of the Hyperion Adventures podcast. I'm Tom. As always, I'm with my gorgeous, wonderful, intelligent, hardworking <laughs> Walt Disney World love and wife yeah. and co-host, Michelle. Thank you, sweetie. Hi, everybody. So good to have you with us. We're recording this episode on Sunday, November 7th, 2021. Congratulations to all the participants of the Wine and Dine yeah. Half Marathon Weekend. It looked like it was soggy <laughs> for the first couple days, but uh, today it looked like it cleared up and was nice, but it was just so good to see Run Disney happening again. Oh, I know. And seeing everybody's, you know, big smiles and, you know, despite the rain... Despite the fact that you're running. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah, that too. I mean, but it, it was, you know, I mean, uh, it's it's understandable too. I mean, you, you put a lot of effort into a lot of times into the what you want to wear for these races and then to have to cover them up with ponchos or other rain gear things, you know, could put a damper mm -hmm. on the event, but it. I think just the fact that it's back, people are just so thrilled. Yeah, it was just exciting to see after, you know, more than two years since we've had a, a, right. a run Disney race. Uh, just very happy. I don't know if it's more than two years, but it's been a long time, yeah. you know, almost two years, if not more than two mm -hmm. years since we've had a run Disney race. So it's just good to see people getting out there again. And um, run Disney may come in our Disney stories of the week as well. So we'll what? get to that later. <laughs> yes. Thank you for joining us today. In the future, you can find us most everywhere you get podcasts. However, the very best place to find us is on our own website, HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. And while you're there, you'll be invited to participate by... Signing up for our newsletter. Yeah, please sign up for the newsletter. Just another way to kind of be involved with us. We try and get you information earlier than any place else. We love input through there. And sometimes Michelle will come up to me and say, <laughs> I've got something that you need to put in the newsletter this week that only goes out to those people who have subscribed to the newsletter. That's right. Yeah, it's fun doing that. And, you know, we appreciate those of you who have already signed up for the newsletter. Yeah, it's uh, exciting to see it grow every uh, once in a while. We'll get more people in yeah. there. And that's a lot of fun. So uh, also, we love hearing from you on social media. Please follow us on Twitter. We're at Hyperion Podcast there. Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. If you are on Facebook, come on over and join us in our Hyperion Adventurers Facebook group. Just a great space for positive Disney energy. We're just having a lot of fun talking about Disney, sharing Disney right. experiences, sharing our Hyperion adventures out there. And we hope you'll join us there. Right. And again, thank you to those of you who've already joined. Please invite your friends and family. Yeah, it's another group that's growing, it seems like, every single day. Yeah, so definitely. we're glad so to fun. have more and more uh, Hyperion Adventurers joining us there. Also, we are on YouTube. Uh, if you want to find us there, do a quick search for Hyperion Adventures Podcast. Hit subscribe and you'll know whenever we have a new video there. And if you ever want to email us for any reason, please hit us up at our Gmail account, Hyperion Adventures Podcast at gmail.com. That's right. We let, As we say every week, we really do love hearing from you all. Those of you who take the time, you know, some are just saying hi and we appreciate that. Yes. Uh, the, the, just for when I, whatever reason you would want to uh, discuss anything with us. Um, we just love the interaction, no matter how it is, whether it's through the Gmail mm -hmm. account, through social media, whatever it may be. So, mm -hmm. also, if you want, if you find any value in this show and you want to throw a little support our way, there's a couple of ways to do that. One is to go through our Spreadshirt shop, where we have lots of different items with various different logos. Uh, sizes, colors, all sorts of interesting stuff. Uh, just to go to Spreadshirt.com and look for uh, Hyperion Adventures podcast there. And that's where you can get some of our cool stuff. Right. Last night, I ordered us some matching PJs for Christmas PJs. with our Christmas logo. Yes. <laughs> matching PJs. <laughs> That'll be something. Right. I love it. Yes, we do have a holiday logo that came out. I think it was just last year that right. we did the holiday logo. And that is one of the logos that you can purchase there along with our hashtag Real Men Love Frozen, right. uh, heading to Hyperion Adventure Land, mm -hmm. and of course, our our typical Hyperion Adventures podcast logo. So right. uh, please check out that stuff there. And if you all, you can also support this show by becoming a Patreon member on our Patreon page. Just go to patreon.com slash Hyperion Adventures podcast to starting as low as two dollars per week we have lots of swag that goes out at all the tiers if you're in a little higher tier we have stuff that involves our disney dishes blog mm -hmm. with recipes that we only um 
get together just for you. You are the only ones that will be seeing these recipes, receiving them every month. And, you know, one thing we decided early on with our Patreon page is that we were never going to make our show be something that you had to pay for Mm -hmm. or, you know, exclusive in that way. So that's why we're using the Disney Dishes blog as that kind of extra added bonus for helping us support this podcast. Right. And we also have some other... Um, items that are going to be coming your way that are going to be available only to the higher tiers in terms of some um, planning guides, etc. Ooh, that's I exciting know. stuff. You heard it here first, <laughs> folks. Um, and of course, we're, we are also planning on doing eventually some sort of get together a, a show involved with those who are mm-hmm. members of our Patreon group. So, oh, and by the way, I released something this week. If you signed up, uh, we, we've already done four Disney Dishes blog recipes of the month. If you sign up uh, this month at the Explorer level or above, not only will you receive all the swag we normally give out, including the uh, future Disney Dishes blog mm-hmm. recipes of the month, you can pick one of the past ones that we've done and we'll send you that one as well. So just an added bonus for signing up here in November. Yeah, very cool. And there's another way that you can help support us that um, is really beneficial and that two simple ways actually one is telling a friend or family about this podcast encouraging them to listen as well uh and the other way is by giving us a five-star review yes five-star review we love them and if you give us a review five-star review not a one-star review we may not read that one on the show maybe we would i don't know it depends on what was said (laughs) in it but a five-star review definitely we will read that on the show in the future Right. So, so uh, speaking of, we, we talked about some support and interaction uh, with our show. Well, we are closing down another category for our Hyperion Adventures podcast, Disney Hall of Fame. So this week's mm-hmm. category, or actually it's been a couple of weeks category, was Best Disney and or Pixar Animated Film. Now, we already have some films that have made it into our Hall of Fame in the first two years. Those would be Aladdin. Mm-hmm. Beauty and the Beast mm-hmm. and Toy Story. So Makes those sense. were out of the mix already. But every other film that has been released since Disney started uh, was available and up for nomination. So uh, before we get to what the final ballot consists of, of course, we like to give our list as well. So mm-hmm. we, when we do these things, we always start with Michelle because she's wonderful, awesome, <laughs> great. She does the best research. She gives the best tips, but she also has the very best list. So Michelle, oh. uh, let the listeners know what your list of nominees are for Best Disney and or Pixar animated film. Okay, in no particular order. Um, and I do think I have probably some that are more obscure than others really from you (laughs) shocking i know i know um so one of them is princess and the frog Mm -hmm. i just think that whole film has such wonderful messages and uplifting spirit uh type of uh i don't know message agreed great great movie great movie for sure uh onward again Uh i think that's you know really showing you know, family bonds. And, you know, I, as when we talked about that show one time on one of our episodes, I kind of gave some of my personal. Yeah, I know Onward really stuck a, struck a right, chord with you for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, Zootopia, again, mm-hmm. uh, different kind of message, but very important message and, and, and just fun to watch. Mm-hmm. too. Love Zootopia. Yeah. Okay. Here I know I'm probably not in the majority with the next. <laughs> no, here we go. But they are great animated films. Uh, one of them is Candace Against the Universe. <laughs> <laughs> it is a verb, the movie. Yes. Um, it is. It really is awesome. Uh, yeah. I mean, the music in it is just is so hilarious and such great comedy. I love how they um, break the fourth wall. Isn't mm-hmm. that what it's called? Um, you know, and it's just great, great, great movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the other one, and, and this is one we've talked about in some past um episodes as well is the tigger movie Mm. you know uh, don't call me corny i am corny but i mean it just it really shows that family goes beyond just blood relatives Mm -hmm. and and you know that you're you may be looking for that relationship and it's it's already out there ready for you it's cute love the tigger movie yeah very good yeah so michelle's list always the best (laughs) list Let's hear yours, Annie. Uh, my list is in alphabetical order, no particular ranking order, but here mm-hmm. are mine. For um, I picked Coco, mm-hmm. of course, the oh, Pixar yep. uh, film. Love Coco. Yeah. 
uh, Frozen and Frozen 2. <laughs> Because hashtag real men love Frozen and hashtag real men love Frozen too. Uh, Monsters, Inc. because it has a special place in our heart. Mm -hmm. Um, Tangled because also hashtag real men love Tangled as well. (laughs) And Wally. I love Wally. Wally is one of my favorite films of all time. Right. It was hard leaving some of those off. Yeah, I I agree. There's so many great ones. Mm -hmm. I I had some difficulties. Some of the ones you named um, Mm -hmm. were very close to making my list. So I I still went above by one. Right. Uh, I still <laughs> did five ish. Uh, so, and I, but I couldn't go too crazy right. with it. So, uh, but let's get to what our actual final ballot nominees will be. And this will be in alphabetical order. And we'll start with Brave. Brave nice. made it mm-hmm. in. So, very happy that yep. Brave is going to be part of that. We, uh, we really, that's another movie that has right. a, a tender place in our heart for that one. Mm-hmm. Um, Coco mm-hmm. did make it in. Finding Nemo. Another great yeah. Pixar film. Love Finding Nemo. Right. Uh, Monsters, Inc. Mm-hmm. did make it in. Good. Peter Pan. Classic Disney. Yeah. Peter Pan made it in. Pinocchio. Talking about another right. Disney yes. classic. Uh, that one made it. Tangled. Yes, Tangled <laughs> made it. I'm not suspicious at all. Yeah, that one. You may notice that we've gone. <laughs> this is in alphabetical order. There was a couple key movies that I love that did not make it in. So... Um, just know that, that I, know. I wasn't twisting this in any way. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, the Lion King made it in. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Little Mermaid as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Princess and the Frog did make Good. it. Wally, yeah. yes, and yes, Zootopia right. made it in just by the skin of their animal eleven teeth. <laughs> there uh, made it in. So all right. those will all be on our final ballot coming up here in about a month or so. And we're putting together already the little gift package, whatever it may be that we're right. going to give out for one person who votes in that final ballot. And we'll let you know when that happens. Now, we do have a new category open for our Hyperion Adventures Disney Hall of Fame, another classic category. And that is Best Disney Animated Character. Cool. So you can vote for, uh, nominate any mm-hmm. uh Disney animated character from Disney or from Pixar. However, we do have a few that have already made it into our mm-hmm. Hall of Fame. We actually grandfathered in the whole entire Sensational Six. So right. Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, Donald, Daisy, and Pluto right. are already in. Also making it in within the last couple of years have been Genie from Aladdin mm-hmm. and Woody from Toy Story. Right. And just last year, Wally uh, made it in. So uh, any other character is up for nomination and we'll have those open for the next couple of weeks. Cool. And of course, just like this week, we will uh, go over the final ballot in a couple of weeks. Right. So, uh, but enough about this, let's get to the fun thing that we always wonder if Michelle will remember. <laughs> I think she did this time. Just so barely. Just barely. Just barely before going on. <laughs> we like to look back at some of the interesting things that happened this week or what is our most interesting thing or at least our favorite thing from this week. So, Michelle, what is your favorite thing from this week? Okay. First of all, I want to clarify why I sometimes don't remember this because, you know, like when I'm planning for the episode and getting all my research done and everything, I'm just like so tunnel visioned. into. I get it. I barely remember it sometimes. <laughs> so if it weren't for already written into my notes, I may forget. So it's okay. All right. I have a cheat sheet ahead of time. Um, you know, I, I think uh, there are several things uh, that I was very happy for. One of which was I did get to work from home one day this week. So nice, yeah. it was really nice to be home for that. Um, but, I, but I think what I really wanted to highlight today is just um, the, the confirmation that kids can be vaccinated. Mm-hmm. The you know, five to 11 age group can now be, uh, receive their COVID vaccines and our clinic will be doing that. So, um, a lot of extra work in regards <laughs> to preparing for that, but it's uh, the still appointments a, booked up pretty quickly. Oh didn't my they? gosh. Yeah. Phew, that's great. Um, so yep, yeah, we're geared up and ready to go, but just happy that that's happening. Some more things that will really help, um, get things to return to more normal, you know? Yes. So, yeah, I know there's a lot of people that have been uh, waiting for that, mm-hmm. uh, looking forward to that when that would occur. And uh, the announcement and it's starting this week was uh, great news. Mm-hmm. And of course, the vaccine is safe for those ages five to 11. Right. Correct. Right. Correct. Yes. <laughs> it's a it, different dose. It's a, a, a smaller dose. And, yeah. 
So yeah, it is safe and effective right. for everybody. Exactly. But yes, even ages five to eleven. So that's good right. news. So mm-hmm. yes, great news, great stuff. Yeah, and yeah that day yeah. on uh, Thursday when you got to stay home from work was really really nice. Well, it was really you. nice to spend the, the day at home with you, even though we were both working on different things throughout right. the day. So. Yeah. You even had a meeting you had to go to that you had to do the old school from home where you dressed up from the top, <laughs> from the waist up, from the Zoom meeting to right? be ready for it. It was pretty funny. So. Uh, yeah. uh, my favorite thing from this week, well, I, I wasn't expecting this. I hadn't really been thinking about it, but then it popped up on social media and I shared it with everybody out there. This week marked the 20th anniversary of the debut of Monsters, mm-hmm. Inc. in theaters. It also marked the 20th year anniversary of our first Disney movie date together, right. which was Monsters, Inc. Yeah. Started our Disney shenanigans <laughs> right there. Um, and, uh, you, you know, it, it, that, why, that is reason why one I, I nominated it earlier in right. our animated films, but it all, is a film that will always be close to our hearts. We love the characters, um, love the storyline, but we also love that that was our first right. Disney really experienced together. Right, exactly. So, yeah, it's very meaningful to us. And thankfully, it's a great film, too. Yes, it is. It's really, <laughs> really good. Really, really good. So. I would hate to have to remember, like, something that was really, oh, dud. Yes. <laughs> a good point very good michelle always has the best <laughs> points so and of course if you ever want to share what your favorite thing is from any week mm-hmm. um please send them to us through social media through our gmail account whatever way and we will share them during the week it could be disney related it could be something completely just personal mm-hmm. that you want to share with everybody we'd be happy to share them on the show now as for this week's show we have lots of stuff for you including we continue to get interesting new tidbits about the disney wish We'll share some of those with you. We now know the theme to run Disney's springtime race weekend, which I believe what we are going to be taking mm-hmm. part in. And we can't wait for that one, especially yeah. with the FOMO from this week. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but let's get right to it. Let's get to our main topic of the week. Yes, as we talked about in last week's show, we, a couple years ago, it's been more than two years now, actually, Mm -hmm. did an episode or a pair of episodes that was a two-part series that were, you know, focusing on the different U.S. theme parks based on where you came from. So if you, last week we did Disneyland for the Walt Disney World fan, Mm -hmm. getting you prepped if you've never been to Disneyland or haven't been there in quite a long time, what it was like if you normally go to Walt Disney World. Well, this time we're flipping the Mm -hmm. script a little bit and we're going the reverse order. So this week, it is Walt Disney World for the Disneyland fan, trying to give you strategies, tips, kind of just give you and fill you in on what to expect Mm -hmm. if you're used to going to Disneyland, but you're thinking about making a trip to the Walt Disney World Resort. Right, right. And like you said, although we did it a couple of years ago, there's been a lot of changes, (sighs) Uh, you know, well, obviously... eh pandemic yeah. but in addition to that just some expansions in the parks and some other different offerings and and some changes and in, in other portions of how you would experience your vacation and so we just thought it would be best to you know just revamp it and, and redo these episodes right so uh, and note again that we are recording this on november 7th 2021 things are changing still right. all the time so you know what is true today may not necessarily be true tomorrow but right. these are the facts as we know them now and hopefully they will be helpful for you so you know as we talked about last week's show i grew up on the west coast going to disneyland uh, Michelle, on the other hand, grew up on the East Coast visiting Walt Disney World. So, you know, coming from tiny Disneyland, as right. I knew it, <laughs> tiny, compact uh, Disneyland, um, getting to go to Walt Disney World for the first time, uh, the size of it was somewhat overwhelming. Right, right. And and just kind of the way you have to approach it. Yeah. So um, good planning uh, can make the difference to you if you're used to being in tiny Disneyland where, you know, you can go in between parks easily and right. and attra- there's a lot more attractions within single parks and everything else. So planning this out, knowing how to approach going to Walt Disney World for your vacation can help you a, a ton. Right. And again, our you know, like we mentioned last week, our goal is just to, you know, one, provide some ideas and tips to know what to expect so that your experience is even better, that you don't experience some 
uh, disappointments. Mm -hmm. And, and believe it or not, I've actually have heard from people who have been disappointed going to Walt Disney Mm -hmm. World from Disneyland um, with some aspects of what they weren't normally experiencing uh when they were at disneyland yeah i mean you you you, we talked about the size thing last week with disneyland coming from the walt disney world resort and how you know looking at sleeping beauty castle can be a little uh, underwhelming when you've already you know you've experienced cinderella castle for so long well it's a completely different animal when you're talking about going the other way and how things are spread out and how you at Walt Disney World and how it could feel like you're missing out on so much if you don't approach it the right way. Right. Or that, you know, at Disneyland, you have, you know, whether you're talking either of their parks, you have so many attractions to mm-hmm. go to within one park. And then at Walt Disney World to to experience, you know, even the duplications of some of those attractions, you have to go to multiple parts. Yes. So we're going to try and get you as prepped as we possibly can uh, for that experience. And we'll start with, well, just getting there. Like what happens when you just are actually getting to the Walt Disney World Resort? <laughs> and we'll start with Michelle to kind of explain uh, a little bit of the transportation that uh, comes with uh, uh, how you get to Walt Disney World itself. Right. You know, um, unlike here on the West Coast, um, typically Orlando International Airport would be the airport that you would arrive in. I mean, as we talked last week, there are a couple other ones within Florida, um, but obviously the distance to the parks is is longer than the one at at, uh, Orlando International. So right now, if you were to land at uh, Orlando International up until the end of this year, you could use Magical Express. Um, So whether you're making a new reservation for now that will arrive by the uh, 31st of December, you can use that. But let's really focus on what you have outside of that as an option, because if you're not coming in in the next few weeks, then that will no longer be available to you. But what will be, and which is pretty comparable because it's uh, provided by the same company as Disney Express, is Mears Connect. And um, so you could just research that, you know, to see what the prices are based on your your um, family size or whatever and see is that. But that is going to be, you know, there is an additional fee to that, unlike uh, the Magical Express. But in terms of knowing who's providing that service and, you know, the logistics of it, it's pretty comparable. Yeah. And because if you are taking Disney Magical Express or have in the past, that is run by Mears. Right. It's the same service. It's just in a different name with a, a fee added to right, it. Right, right. Yes. So, um, so that's one option. And, you know, f- for again, for the, our purpose for this show is really to enlighten you on what things to expect. You know, there's a lot of details in any of planning, and this is not the episode to do that, or we'd be on all afternoon yes which we were last <laughs> week and we, who knows maybe it's again today we're but gonna we're, tr- we're, we're trying we're gonna try to. and be more succinct <laughs> today yes um the other option obviously is you could rent a car and there's some definite pros to that you know one it gives you the flexibility you know to go when you want to go like if you're going from your resort to the uh to the parks you just get in your car and you go unlike uh, you know, the transportation that Disney provides uh, complimentary, then you're, you could be waiting, you know, up to 20 minutes or more for transportation. So that's, there's a plus to that. Um, and it gives you the opportunity, obviously, to go to other places within uh, Florida to visit. Some of the cons on that process, though, are is you do have to pay for parking at the resort for overnight stays. Um, You don't have to pay at the parks. That's free with your, um, you know, the fact that you're staying on property. Um, But you do have to pay for that. And another option that has become more and more popular with people is ride shares. And there's a lot of different companies with that. And based on, again, how small or large of a group you are um, is something that you could research. But the other one I want to bring up is what I call bit of both, a little (laughs) bit of our galaxy. (laughs) <laughs> bit of both. A bit of both. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy theme there. Um, is that you could actually do a little of both. You could do, for example, a ride share or Mirrors Connect just one way, just over to bringing you to Walt Disney World. 
Um, and that could kind of save you some money from renting a car, one, the daily fees of a rental car plus the daily parking of a rental. Um, but then if you want to eventually get a car, let's say to a go back to the airport or just to travel around and do some other things in Orlando is you could arrange for a rental car at Disney's car uh, let me try to say it (laughs) Disney's car care center which is right on property there and um, that way you're you know you wait till you absolutely need that rental car and then is when you start using that and and paying for it so let's say you're doing it on the day you're leaving you're not going to pay for overnight fees you're not going to pay those car fees and what's really great is for that is they do provide complimentary shuttle with you know at to your resort and to the car center so that you don't have to to worry about that like how am i even going to get to the car center they will they will do that pickup for you um you can reserve this in advance online you can do it through the car rental you know companies that are supported into that uh disney car center there's only three of them and they're all tied together right so just, you know right the other way that you can arrange for the the shuttle service is you can either obviously you can call yourself and arrange that through your phone or you can go to the concierge at the resort that you're staying or even just the lobby phone you can get that connection to the car center care during the last time we were, we were yeah during the last time <laughs> we were there when we had a rental car through the car care center they actually called me to schedule the shuttle nice. I, yeah so i mean yeah i wouldn't re- depend on that right. they're going to do that i would make the call myself i was planning on making the call myself but they called me before i even had the chance to schedule that shuttle so that Sweet. worked out really nicely yeah. yes so um you know the nice thing in florida for most rent car contracts is you're not going to pay a a, a, like a penalty fee to pick up at one location and drop off at another you you do need to verify that when you're making the reservation but for the most part they do not charge for that whereas in some other areas they they do have a fee for that Um, the other important note is the car center care why can't i say this car care center car care center disney's car care center is open 7a to 7p Okay. Yeah. Good stuff. So yeah. yeah, different options that you could research, um, depending on, you know, what your plans are and how much you really want to, uh, put into it. But there, it's, it's nice that they do have a lot of different options for you. Yes, for sure. And while I will say though, while they don't have a fee right now for you to, you know, pick up the car at one location, drop it off on a different location, um, because of the fact that uh, rental cars have been scarce and they're mm-hmm. starting to get back to speed like they have in the past, but they still don't have the cars that they once had, mm-hmm. uh, that they are sometimes uh, pushing the rate a little higher if you are dropping it off in a different location. Mm-hmm. Uh, so double check and do right. your homework and to figure out what don't depend on it necessarily, figure out what's right for you. Right, exactly. So anyways, that's how to get from the airport to Walt Disney World. Yeah, very good. And let's Thank talk you. about it when you get there. Where are you going to go when you get there? Well, of course, the parks. We'll <laughs> talk about that for sure. Uh, but most likely, if you're staying uh, somewhere around there, you're going to be staying at one of the resorts right. nearby. Now, there are more than 20 actual Disney resorts. That's a big difference from Disneyland. There are <laughs> yeah. only three right. actual, right, as we speak right now, only three actual Disneyland resorts. There are more than 20. I, I think my number, I wrote it down here, is 25. I think there's a, they've added one since then. So uh, maybe more than that now. But anyway, there are more than 20 Disney resorts and hotels to choose from. And there are, are a ton of offsite right. locations and some, they've built some new ones, as a matter of fact. We stayed at a new offsite mm-hmm. location not that long ago when we were there and uh, enjoyed our, our time there. Right, it was exactly. a good stay for sure. So as far as when you, what you want to go with, um, well, that depends on your budget. And, you know, the good thing about it is there are many different budget actual Disney hotels. Mm-hmm. They all tend to be a little on the higher end. Even the what is considered the value resorts tend to be a little bit on the right. higher end of the hotels. But, you know, it's what works for you. So, you know, there are some perks that do come with Disney resorts, but they're not as many as there used to be. It used to be um, that we would say, you want to stay at a Disney resort mm-hmm. because they have this, that, and the other thing right. that comes along with it. Now, I will say right now, 
they don't have quite as many perks. And that opens up a little bit more for you to look at some of those offsite locations. Sure. So you, you have to weigh it for yourself. You're probably going to pay a little bit more to stay at a Disney resort itself. But you also get like the Disney magic, right? you know, and there's a lot to be said right. for that, for sure. Um, you know, so you, you there are some perks that still exist. You need to weigh it based on what is right for you, what is right for your budget. So here's a few things that still do exist as far as perks for staying at a Disney resort. And again, we're hoping that eventually they're going to add some more things. But as of today, uh, this is what still exists. Uh, you can still save, you know, money and time by using their complimentary transportation, mm -hmm. the Disney transportation from all the resorts to the parks. Right. Uh, you know, those are the monorail, of course. They have the buses going and they have the Skyliner as well. Right. All great forms of transportation that you don't need to pay an extra dime for uh, when you want to get from to various locations throughout the Walt Disney World Resort. Right. And when you take those complimentary transportations, your drop-off location is much closer to the front of the park that you're going to versus if you're going to drive in and park in their parking lots. Mm -hmm. So that is one thing. That is the major perk to, to take into account uh, when you're trying to figure this out. Also, they've opened up a couple things that are just for people that stay at Disney resorts. Uh, you have an opportunity to spend a little more time in the parks. That's mm -hmm. because uh, for those and only for those that are staying on Disney resorts, uh, they will open up all parks 30 minutes early. You mm -hmm. can get into any of the parks, whatever one you have uh, you know, admission and a res park reservation for, you can get in 30 minutes earlier than anybody else into to that park and if you're staying at some of the higher end areas the disney deluxe resort hotels or the disney deluxe villas uh you can enjoy extended evening hours as well at a couple of parks um and this is exclusively for you and those parks are magic kingdom and epcot uh those are only on mondays and wednesday nights so it's mm -hmm. epcot usually on mondays uh, magic kingdom on wednesdays and they will be open for you for two hours mm -hmm. right now is where they're nice. going two hours after the uh, what would be the park closed for all other guests that are staying there so that i mean you're paying a lot for those those mm -hmm. are the really high end uh, the really pricey resorts, um, but you do get that bonus of that extra time with probably a lot less people in those oh, parks. Oh yeah, definitely. So. so, and again, for that one, you will also need a park reservation and a admission ticket. You can't just go in just because you're staying at the resort. You will right. need admission, park reservation, or a park hopper uh, ability right. to you know you, you can start the day at. Um, Hollywood Studios right. and then go Epcot. to Epcot or go to Magic Kingdom later as long right. as you have the park hopper ability or wrapped around your ticket or annual pass or whatever you're using. Also, we're, we're going to talk a little bit more about Genie Plus later, but um, you do have the opportunity if you're staying on Disney Resorts, if you want to purchase the individual attraction Lightning Lane access, so some of the, the more popular attractions mm -hmm. um, and you want to Get, get those and, and be able to not have to wait in the queue or whatever. Um, you get that opened up to you if you're staying at a Disney resort at 7 a.m. Anybody who's staying at a offsite location or is, you know, just staying locally or whatever, mm -hmm. they have to wait until the park opens. So you do get that perk of right. trying to secure one of those spots if you want to pay a little extra and get that for sure access into something like rise of the resistance right. etc so yes. just know that going in now michelle um tell the listeners out there what uh, these hotels they are because you know it's a little different from disneyland i, I mean i guess technically there is a value moderate <laughs> and deluxe resort at disneyland but eh. <laughs> but there really is that at, at the walt disney world resort right so you know i know you talked about some of the perks that come along with uh, staying at Disney property. And I guess there's some others that are more of uh, your experience versus, you know, some additional, um, you know, whether you're talking amenities or whatever. So uh, first of all, is that you really can envelop yourself into that vacation bubble when you're staying on their property. Um, you know, you're, you're leaving like the real world behind and you're in this, you know, like you said, the magic is there. Um, you know, so that that's a real perk. And there's some other perks that, that they offer at these resorts that are Disney things that you wouldn't get anywhere else. So we'll talk about them. But they really have like four categories, you know, and you've already mentioned, you know, that, that have um, 
different levels of, of what they offer, what they cost. Um, and But the one thing that is consistent in all of them is theming. They all have spectacular theming that really, you know, you're at a Disney resort staying there. And, and not to mention just knowing and, you know, feeling comfortable with the issue of, you know, how things are maintained and how they look, you know what to expect that high quality of not just service, but of what the room is going to offer you compared to if you're staying offsite. And I think that's one of the things when, when we're researching to stay offsite, it's like, you know, if it says like three stars or whatever the rating is, is it like the bottom that is almost like a two star and it's, you know, an older hotel that may not be kept up. You might have smelly rugs or something like that. Or is it a higher end three, you know, that it might be a newer or or just recently renovated resort and you feel great in there. Yeah. It really is value versus magic. You know, when you're, when you're talking about offsite onsite uh, for some of these resorts, you know, what, uh, yes, you will probably pay less uh, to stay off site. Mm-hmm. However, you may not have that magical experience right. that you have by staying on a Disney property. So again, we've all we've talked about this many times. What is a value to you? It may be, and if it's just budget, off site might be for you. If value comes with the Disney magic, the mm-hmm. Disney bubble that Michelle talked about, then maybe paying that little bit more is of value to you. Right. And so, you know, obviously different times of the year, things are going to have better pricing, you know, and sometimes Disney is offering discounts, et cetera. So, you know, things to consider. Oh, by the way, also one thing I forgot to mention Mm -hmm. um, that eventually coming back will be the Disney dining plan. And that is just for Disney resort guests as well. Right. It's not back yet, but I don't think it's very far away from coming back. So um, put that into the equation as well when that returns. Good deal. That's right. Okay. So let's start at the uh, most economical and that's, they're called the budget resorts. Um, you know, I guess in comparison to some of their other resorts, they have fewer amenities, but they're, they are really still amazing. Um, like I mentioned, they have fun theming still, you mentioned some of the other perks that they have. Um, but they also, you know, they also have great pools, you know, uh, with lifeguards there, they have movies under the stars, free Wi-Fi. Some resorts outside do charge for that. They have laundry facilities around it. And, and like we mentioned, obviously, the, the complimentary transportation. Now, with the budget resorts, when you talk about food options, it's it's pretty much quick service or food court style foods. Um, they may have something that I, I don't want to necessarily call it a bar, but they may have, a they, they, they all have ways of ordering, you know, some cocktails, beer and wine, um, usually at the food court area and at a pool bar. But what's really nice is they do have bottle options in their gift shops and the prices for those are pretty reasonable, especially considering you're, you know, at a Disney resort. And now the rooms typically have like one queen bed and then another queen bed that is kind of a combo Murphy bed slash table. Mm-hmm. It's a little hard to describe uh, that, but it really is convenient. It, it, you know, it allows you to have the bed in the evening and then during the day you put it back up, it gives you a, a table space area, really freeing up a lot of space in the room too. Yeah, it really is a good use of space within, you know, what is not a enormous room. But right. It does, it feels better when you know rather than just have two beds in there all the time right exactly now the nice thing is some of these budget resorts have what they call suites and it does provide you more space more living space and a kitchenette so if you're a family of six this might be a good option for you You still have the ability to be in a budget resort um, but you know you have the comfort and space to allow for more guests Mm mm-hmm That's the first level. The next level up from that is called moderate resorts. Um, And as you would expect, it's a step up with some more amenities. Um, Obviously, it's going to be a little bit more expensive, but they do offer all the same amenities that the budget resorts have. They typically have at least one table service restaurant. Now, that being said, as we've mentioned to some other things, not all of them have their table service restaurant open yet. Right. Thanks to the pandemic. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, but they also have, you know, and I'm not trying to make this all about alcohol, um, but they do have more. We usually do. 
<laughs> they uh, they do tr- have a more traditional bar. And one of our faves is the River Roost at Port Orleans where Yeehaw Bob Jackson performs. So uh, it's not he's not performing every night. So you just look at the schedule. But, you know, again, it just provides a little bit more comfort and other amenities to the resort compared to a budget. Yeah, and, and by the way, we, we've mentioned this in the past about Yeehaw Bob, even though he does perform in a lounge, uh, don't think that he's, it's not a family friendly show. Oh my gosh, show. no, yeah. yeah uh, it it's, is. it's a very family friendly experience, even though there is alcohol, you know, in abundance there. Right, yeah. right. But you can also get non-alcoholic yes. things and it, it can be for, I mean, even food. little kids. And right. there's food there right. too. Right, exactly. Yeah. So um, the next two levels, I'm going to just, for time sake, going to combine them because there's a lot of similarities with what they offer and that's the deluxe or the deluxe villa resorts. And, you know, these are your high ends that, you know, our favorite places that people love to stay at. So whether you're talking, you know, like the the deluxe resorts, like Contemporary, Grand Floridian, Poly, um, or the the villas where they have um, vacation DVC resorts as well. You know, one of the things, obviously, they'll have larger, more grandiose lobbies, um, obviously that like four diamond type resort that you would expect. Um, they have more options, obviously, for dining. So they they do have quick service available for you if, if that's, you know, something that is a convenience of you. But they also have table service dining. And these are the, the restaurants that you would, um, if you're really interested in going to, which they're really phenomenal, that you would um, want to seek out a reservation in advance. They do have some, you know, walk up or same day, but it's it's less than you would expect, I think. Mm-hmm. And speaking of that, uh, if you are looking to make dining reservations, uh, they are 60 days out now. They used to be, when you were staying on property, 120 days out. Right. Uh, now it's 60 days out for everybody. So just know that going in, that uh, if, you're, if you're planning this, and that's similar to Disneyland. Disneyland, you know, is for since this is for Disneyland fans. Right. Um, Disneyland right now, if you're trying to make a reservation, they start at 60 days out. Mm-hmm. Same with Walt Disney World at this point. Right, right. So very good point. Um, so the other thing with these resorts is they're typically situated closer to the parks than the other resorts. I think the one difference, one might say the Animal Kingdom Lodge is a little further. I mean, it's close to Animal Kingdom. Well, it is on Animal Kingdom air land. Right. But, yes. but it's not like you could walk to the park, whereas the other ones um, y- you might be able to a consider. lot of them most of most of them you are within i mean there's some of them that are not you know right. some of the uh, dvc is like uh you know uh saratoga saratoga springs right, and right, such right, are not yeah. necessarily walkable to the parks right. but a lot of like the boardwalk and uh, the riviera has easy right. train you can't walk from the riviera but it's got the skyliner right. running right through it um, of course, the Bay Lake Towers, the right. Contemporary are within walking distance of Magic Kingdom, right. et cetera. Yes. So, I mean, these are great resorts. I mean, you do feel the luxury when you go into these um, deluxe or resorts or deluxe villas. Um, you're going to get all the service, the signature service that you would expect in any, any of these you know, high-end resorts. You know, and obviously that comes with the price tag of it. But... Um, you know, they are really, like I said, can make your your experience so much more elevated. Now, with the villas, the one thing about the villas is they do provide you some real home comfort as well. You know, so um, depending on if you get like a one bedroom and up, you'll have a full kitchen, all the appliance and cookery needs you could ever want there. Um, even their studios have like kitchenettes at least. So and sitting areas, et cetera. So that, you know, you have more space and more amenities in that regards as well. Now there are some insanely majestic ones that are available. If you, uh, whether you're going on, uh, you know, paying for it or on DVC points that we just want to point out now, not all the deluxe resorts are like this, although they all offer something like this, but there's, for example, the three bedroom villas at Bay Lake Tower and Animal Kingdom Resorts where they have the floor to ceiling windows and they're on several different levels um, with spectacular views. Those are amazing. The bungalows on the water at the Polynesian, you know, these are resorts that, you know, it it is a bungalow on on stilts on the water. Um, You have your own deck and uh, 
a plunge pool. Uh, you're overlooking where you could see the fireworks mm -hmm. in the evening. You know, it's just really special. Um, Another one that is special is the tree houses at Saratoga Springs. I mean, you're actually, again, still uh, out, you know, above the land in the, in the trees. It's really a unique experience and view. Um, and then I think our very fave is the cabins at Copper Creek. Um, here you have fireplaces, again, private porch, you have your own hot tub. I mean, it is just just an amazing uh, experience to have a vacation in that type of a... Of Not a, that we've experienced it yet, but it is on our list of things yeah, to do. Yeah, we've yes. toured it. We've toured it. We've toured yeah. it. It's spectacular. Um, and by the way, if you are, you know, interested in touring those locations, you can uh, check in with a DVC representative at the hotels and, and they'll arrange for you to have a tour to mm -hmm. see what some of these locations are like. You know, and obviously you don't have, those are like the upper end ones, but you know, you can at different times of the year, even with deluxe resorts such as like um, Yacht Club, which Yacht and Beach Club, which have like the best pools on property. Um, you can sometimes really get some secure some really great bargains when mm -hmm. they have some some deals going on there so um anyways and you know or maybe your budget permits that you can splurge like that and go for it but it's just spectacular yeah those are great rooms and great areas and they are great hotels they really are right I mean, they talk a little bit more about them in the, uh, as we go through this episode here right so but i mean like you said that's a, if you've only been to disneyland it, it to see that many options available to you is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. And again, like you said, it can be overwhelming because it does add a level of planning that you wouldn't normally have. For sure. Yep, for sure. So great right. stuff there. Yeah. So so we've gone through the transportation. We've gone through the hotels. But what, what have we not gotten to yet? Well, the parks <laughs> themselves, of course. Um, you know, it's a little different than Disneyland, like we've talked about. You know, Disneyland, everything is really, really close together, really compact. Mm -hmm. You can bounce between, if you have park hopper options, between the two parks pretty easily. Um, it's not as easy so much at uh, the Walt <laughs> Disney World Resort. It is a big a group of land there, and not everything is really close together there is a lot of transportation to get you between mm -hmm. the parks if you do decide that you want to park hop between them right. but it's not as easy to do and as a matter of fact um, we don't necessarily recommend you spending the extra money for the park hopper tickets just because of a lot of the times what you have to go through you know how long it takes to get to one of these other parks right so if if, if that's what you want to do that's fine there's no right. problem or if you only with have a, a single day to go sure but yeah. um but it's not necessarily if you're going to be there for a week sometimes it's better just to do you know price wise mm -hmm. you know one park per day ticket so again it's what's right for you so you know so the things that are different about the theme parks at Walt Disney World. One, you know, again, there's only two parks within Disneyland. So all the stuff you expect is within those two parks mm -hmm. pretty close together. Um, there may be things that you find in these parks that, oh yeah, okay, this is exactly where I would expect it mm -hmm. in Magic Kingdom because that's what it is like at Disneyland. Uh, they also may be in a completely different right. park somewhere else <laughs> uh, along the resort. So uh, just know that they have the four theme parks there, which are Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Disney's Hollywood Studios, and Disney's Animal Kingdom Park. And they each give you a, quite a different experience. Mm -hmm. Magic Kingdom is like Disneyland. If you right. know Disneyland, Magic Kingdom is pretty similar to that. It's got the Main Street USA. It's got the castle. It's got the hub. It's got Tomorrowland, Adventureland, Frontierland, Fantasyland, Fantasyland mm -hmm. etc. cetera. Um, and so it will seem like what you would expect from Disneyland, but just don't expect that every single attraction you find at Disneyland right. to be there. Um, also, that park is probably the most crowded park. Right. It's going to be the busiest park. Know that going in, <laughs> that that park is the popular park. It's probably the most busy park there. Yeah, that's true. The other park that has suddenly become really, really busy, didn't used to be that way, but <laughs> recently, Disney's Hollywood Studios has become increasingly busy right. because some of the high profile attractions that have opened there, including uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and right. Rise of the Resistance, the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, Toy Story Land, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And there aren't a, a really a ton of attractions in that park. Right. So sometimes you'll have a lot of queues there that are rather long. So 
be prepared for that going in, but also know that you're going to have a lot of the attractions you may want to do right. uh, within that park. Um, Epcot is the park that is kind of like the World's Fair come to life. Now, mm-hmm. right now, it is going through a transformation. So there are parts of it that would have been opened in the past that aren't really open. It's gradually getting back to the Epcot we know mm-hmm. and love, but it's not there yet. However, there are still great attractions there. World Showcase is one of our favorite areas right. in any Disney park, just to um, go around and check out the food, check mm-hmm. out the uh, lifestyle, the um, culture. Culture, thank you. Uh, that is there, there. And just stroll around and have a good time. I wouldn't expect that if you're going to Epcot that you plan on doing a lot of attractions on that day, not that they don't have them. But you don't really think attraction heavy when you go to Epcot right now. However, you go there and just soak in the Disney magic, the Disney ambiance. Right. Yeah. And if you're a foodie, that's the place to go for sure. Yeah. That's where they have all the festivals. Right. There's almost seems like there's a festival going on all the time now. So be prepared for that when you're there as well. Right. And, you know, for smaller kids, although they have things available to that to the interest of smaller kids, it. It's not as numerous as some of the other parks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. so just know that going in. Mm-hmm. Um, it's they're, they're adding more things. They opened Ratatouille recently. Mm-hmm. Of course, just a few years back, you know, hashtag real men love frozen ever <laughs> after. Uh, they opened that up not too long ago. So they're starting to open up more things that maybe kids will enjoy. I think there like are. Nemo and friends. Yeah. And, there are yeah. things that kids will also enjoy. Like there's the kid cot stations where right. you're kind of learning some things as you're going through the countries and everything. Hopefully, and hopefully we'll receive some news about this at Destination D23 because they used to have the um, Agent P. Right. Um, you know, kind of scavenger hunt that right. went through, interactive scavenger hunt that went through there and they were going to change that to a DuckTales right. version. Um, we haven't heard if that is still following through, but hopefully that will, we'll hear news about that sure. because uh, those were a lot of fun as well and great for kids to experience. Um, just give you another thing to kind of go through and do as you're going through the through World Showcase and right. the countries there for the little ones. Uh, and finally, there's Disney's Animal Kingdom Park, which is all about the animals and, you know, uh, it, it's really... Uh, a wonderful place to go and explore and check out the animals. Right. They have some great attractions there. They do have some great food there as well. Uh, they do have Pandora there, the world of Avatar, which is kind of an interesting, fascinating right. place to check out as well. Great attractions there as well. But it's really another kind of laid back park that you just kind of want to go and walk around and explore right. and see the animals. Um, you learn some things while you're there because they do have a lot of people out kind of telling you things about the animals and, and, and what they do in nature and everything. It, it, it's, a, it's a really cool park. Right. I mean, it's, you know, somewhat like a zoo in some regards, but it's not totally like that. It is like Tom said, it's, it's big, it's huge. It's the largest, you know, you could fit all three other parks into that land that it's on. Um, so it is really unique in that it has attractions as well as the animals and the education part about the animals. But like, you know, you just mentioned, honey, those um, people that are there to explain some things you could, you don't have to go up to them, but really you're missing out because they really are amazing at how they tailor their presentation to their audience of an age group. And it's usually just, you know, one party that's there, you know, so that it's not like it's a a large group where there's 20 or 30 people standing around listening. These people are like doing an individual, like we've done it where it's just the two of us talking to Mm -hmm. them. And and then, like I said, we've seen them and overheard them talking like with little kids and, and how they adjust the same concepts um, to be more applicable for kids. It's, mm-hmm. They're very impressive. So it's really worth taking the time to seek them out when you're at Animal Kingdom because it's a great addition that's being offered. Mm-hmm. And the park is themed really well around like the different portions of the park are based on what part of the world it's in. So you have Asia, right. you have Africa, et cetera. And it's themed to kind of look like as if you were dropped in the middle of Africa right. or Asia or whatever. And Pandora. 
Yes, and Pandora. <laughs> um, and they, of course, they they do have a. If you want to go, if you if you have kids or if you personally love animals, you will definitely want to make mm-hmm. this a part of your trip to Walt Disney World. They do have the Kilimanjaro Safaris, where it's basically a tour uh, through the savanna where all the animals are out, right. and they do a good job of um, you know placing food and some other um, doing some other things to kind of let the animals be out there so you can see them a lot of times when you're on that tour. So uh, you will see a lot of animals when you are on the Kilimanjaro safaris. Right. And Disney Plus had a series Mm -hmm. um, several months ago about, you know, mainly about the mating efforts for some of these animals, especially some of the endangered species, that if you are planning to go, it's really beneficial, I think, to look at that and really get to have a better appreciation of what this park is all about. For sure. Um, Really, really great stuff there. And that that show is really good. I love that show. I hope that they're going to come back with a season two here pretty yeah. soon maybe we'll find out that's right uh disney plus day is this week so maybe we'll Ooh. find out on disney plus day if they're coming back with a season two hopefully so yes so yes we talked about theme parks but they're all also this is florida it gets hot <laughs> they have water parks there as well that you may want to take advantage of usually it's a separate ticket price mm-hmm. to add the water parks in but they do have two of them one that's not open right now we haven't heard details on when they may be opening it again they're doing some refurbishment for it that one is typhoon lagoon disney's typhoon lagoon not open right now however there is one that is open mm-hmm. and it, sometimes it shuts down during the winter months but it is open during the spring summer and a lot of the fall for right. sure and that is disney's blizzard beach so if you're a water park fan or if you just kind of want a day to get away from the parks itself but still kind of have that fun and adventure um that might be a way to go for you right you know or if you're looking at uh, reducing the number of park tickets it like you said there is a separate fee for it but it's not as pricey as going to the parks Mm -hmm. so uh you know and we talked about the parks here but really you know the parks aren't the only experiences at walt disney world that are interesting. I mean, the resorts themselves are very interesting. We've discussed them a little bit already. Michelle right. talked about some of the theming and some of the stuff that goes into them. Uh, Michelle, can you explore a little bit more in that how the resorts are almost an attraction on their own? Right. And, you know, that's one of the great news, I guess, newsworthy. I don't know if it is newsworthy, but um, one of the great things that, you know, as they're opening things up, that now they are, you know, actually allowing people to go to other resorts to do the to do the resort hopping. Um, that is really a lot of fun that you don't really get to experience or look for something you'd look forward to as much at Disneyland if you're only been visiting Disneyland because there are so many great themed resorts that have some unique aspects to it. Now I do want to point out that although you can do the park hopping the parking is really they are reserved for people who are staying on the resort or who have a dining reservation. So in order to get to do those park hopping you would need to use Disney transportation. So like taking, you know, one of the Disney, whether it's a bus or a Skyliner or monorail from or boat or boat. That's right. From the um, parks or Disney Springs over to one of these resorts. But um, yeah, and and we've talked about this in the past that you could do a day of uh, resort hopping or if you want to do a park in the daytime in the morning and then in the evening just pick up a couple other little experiences at the park at the resorts that's great too so although there's um obviously with some of the the higher end like the deluxe or deluxe villa resorts that have you know really uh luxurious and ultra theming you don't want to miss out sometimes on even some of the budget and moderate resorts because they have some fun aspects that you might want to check out as well for example even just like the all-star resorts and and you know, looking at the all-star movies resort, for example, just going around and seeing these larger than life displays. Um, it's just a fun atmosphere, especially for kids. I think that's the one that they feel probably the most comfortable with or, you know, can relate to the most, you know, so that that you could try some, some experiences there. And again, even with their gift shops, they have things that are very themed to what that resort has. So um, that's something to consider. It. consider. Uh, Port Orleans, well, what can I say? One word, beignets. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, it's worth the trip to go out there just for that. But they also have some other great, you know, um, food that you would think of in relationship to uh, New Orleans at that resort that you could check out. But they also have things like, um, you know, where you can get on the boats, the waterways and explore out there. Um, they've had carriage rides in the past. You know, and, the, and they also have some other, uh, they have had in the past some other activities that you could do, but they're not, they're currently suspended. But again, just to go in and experience uh, one of these resorts and just feel like you've been transported to another location. I mean, and, and talk about transported to another location, the Riviera, ooh la la. I mean, <laughs> you can definitely feel the influences of Europe in that resort and just stopping by there and, you know, walking the grounds, you know, looking even just at the resort. There's a lot of great uh, historic Walt Disney artwork there that of things that uh, whether, he, you know, shows what he and his wife Lillian have done in their vacations, um, some very historic um, art pieces and collectible things that they have, I mean, obviously in case, but that you can experience that, you know, really show you the history there, but how it ties in with, you know, the love that Walt and his wife had for going to Europe and, and how we see some of those influences in some of the movies as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, some of the food, you know, you can really have some great um, French pastries there, some specialty coffees. So it's just really fun going and exploring these different themed rest, I mean, themed resorts. And when you're talking the holiday time, well, I could go on and on about that with the different types of displays that they have there, especially the ginger house, gingerbread house displays that they have at these places. But again, you really, you're in that bubble and you, you can be mesmerized by how much fun that they put with the theming at these resorts. Yeah, if you go to Walt Disney World Resort and just go to the parks and then back to your hotel, back to your resort, and don't go and explore uh, some of these other resorts, I mean, you don't have to hit them all, right. but hit a couple of the key ones, uh, you're really missing out. And it's not a complete vacation in, in the way I look at it because mm -hmm. um, there are so many amazing things to experience just in those resorts. We will always recommend a downtime day where maybe you just go and explore some of these resorts to one to kind of break things up between the parks right. give your legs a little bit of a rest uh, let your mind set at ease a little bit um, but also just because there is so many incredible things to experience just in the resorts themselves and it don't, doesn't cost you an extra dime at all to go check them out right exactly and and some of them are really very easy to get to um, well they all are easy to get to if you're going from the parks but you know for example if you're going to check out a couple of the monorail resorts you know it's just hop on and hop off at, at the different resorts that way you know or the gondolas yeah, the you know skyliner, yeah. skyliner that you could travel from you know the different parks like uh, hollywood studios to the riviera etc um you know or to some of the others the caribbean mm -hmm. beach etc so you know it's it's something that can be easy break from your day um it, it can really help you reset you know if you've been like really trying to do attractions and getting through crowds and things like that to just have that that moment to kind of relax but explore something that is amazing i mean i can't describe how unique it is mm -hmm. yeah much different than you know we talked about you know comparing to disneyland you can go to disneyland and right. not have to visit any of the resorts the resorts you know the, the grand california is great right love it it is beautiful disneyland hotel is pretty good yeah you don't need to go to Paradise Pier. But, <laughs> but you know, you don't need to go. To, you can go to Disneyland and have a great time without right. exploring those resorts. When you go to Walt Disney World Resort, yes, you can have a great time and not go there. But it will enhance by visiting a couple of these spots. Oh, yeah. Wilderness Lodge. I mm -hmm. mean, getting over to see Wilderness Lodge will blow your mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Agreed. So. Agreed. All right. So I, I, th I think there's some a few other things, though, that you can do in addition to, you know, hotel hopping uh, and going to parks and things like that. Uh, they have golf courses there. You can even play, uh, what is it called with the, the foot golf, right? Yeah. Foot, foot golf. golf. Yeah. Um, you know, and then they also have a couple really cute miniature golf courses there that, you know, obviously miniature golf is, is a hoot and fun. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you would expect Disney to have something, 
you know, really spectacular and they do not disappoint um, in what they have there. And there's also um, Disney Springs. It's not at all like downtown Disney. This is huge in comparison, but they do have, you know, what you would expect in terms of like Disney shops as well as other shops. Um, and they also have great restaurants from celebrity chefs. And opening later this month, in fact, on November 18th, is going to be the new Cirque du Soleil show, Drawn to Life. So it is a, a Cirque du Soleil uh, show that you can um, buy tickets to go see. And it does bring in the theme of Disney. Mm -hmm. uh, the, in fact, the, the theme the of animation. Mm -hmm. So you get to really experience something uh, spectacular, you know, as an evening event. Mm -hmm. so, so Good stuff. Yeah. 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 So I think we've covered a lot of things. We've covered a lot of things. I just want to hit one more thing just really, really quickly. And that's because uh, this isn't at Disneyland yet. It's coming. It's getting closer, but it is not there yet. But it is already working at Walt Disney World. And that is Genie Plus. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is uh, what, what that essentially is, is if you, since, we, you know, you were a Disneyland fan, uh, you know what Disneyland used to have, which was Max Pass, right. which you could pay for on a day by day basis or have it a, uh, as a part of your ticket price or right. your annual pass added on. Uh, and this is kind of essentially what this is uh, at the Walt Disney World Resort and will be soon at the Disneyland Resort as well. Uh, there, First, there's Genie, which is basically it kind of is a... That's free. That's free. It doesn't cost you a cent. It, it You just put plug in a few things of what you like to do, and it'll give you some ideas of how you might want to uh, plan your day out based right. on what park you're in. Now, Genie Plus is what I'm, so I was talking about that's like Max Pass. Uh, for that, it is $15 per day per guest. Uh, and you can use that when you go into the park and it'll give you access to essentially fast passes or what it is now called lightning lane mm -hmm. uh, for the different attractions, except for those ones that are the super big ones that I was saying you have to pay individual prices to get that lightning lane access. Uh, but through all the other attractions, you can go through and just like with Max Pass, you, you went on. And, you know, you, you, you went in and looked and said what was available. You signed on to it and you would get a basically a return time to go to that lightning lane for that attraction. And then that would be good. You would use that until you actually went through the attraction. Then you could book the next one. Or if it's something that's been like way in the future, uh, two hours later, you can book another attraction for lightning lane there. So right. I think the only difference is you will be offered the next available, mm -hmm. like where I think that was. Well, a that's the way it was for Max Pass. Too. I thought it gave you no. It was options. just like it was just like going through a, a, getting a fast pass, like oh. going and getting a paper fast pass. It would be whatever time was available for that window there, oh, okay. and that's exactly what this is like. The cool. same thing. So whatever's the next window for it, you, that's what you would go to. As soon as you scan into that attraction, then you can pick your next one. Right. Or like I said, you'll have a two-hour window afterwards. That once that two-hour window passes, if you haven't gotten to your attraction yet it will open up for you to get another lightning lane right. access so cool. so that i just wanted to touch on that real quickly if you know max pass you'll know genie plus right okay right. basically it's just it's just a slightly different name and done slightly different but um it's pretty much what you would expect so i think right. that pretty much wraps it up um we again we if you have any questions about walt disney world uh we would love to answer them right. we would love to help you out um we do recommend travel agents are great as well because they don't cost you a cent and they know a lot of stuff mm -hmm. uh, as far as uh, how to book these things right. how to book the reservations how to approach these parks they are also great and helping you out for your Walt Disney World vacation. That's a really good point. Yeah. So, so that's it. Again, hit us up, our Gmail account, social media. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. And that is our look at Walt Disney World for the Disneyland fan. Okay, we went a little bit less time on this than we did last week for Disneyland Yay. for the Walt Disney World fan, but we still went a little long. So let's <laughs> get right to our Disney stories of the week. And we're going to start with, we continue to get interesting new tidbits about the Disney Wish, which we're really excited mm -hmm. about because we are booked aboard her next summer. So uh, this again from the Disney Parks blog. They said, it's no secret that the Disney Wish is going to be incredible. <laughs> 
<laughs> the newest ship debuting in summer 2022 will be jam-packed with activities and features uh, brand new to Disney Cruise Line. And you may recall that they tease some pretty cool new programming in Hero Zone, a futuristic sports arena where guests will experience a brand new kind of active family play. Well, they shared a first look at the super-powered family competition being developed exclusively for this place. Uh, they say introducing the Incredigames. Woo-hoo! Yeah. <laughs> Inspired by the dynamic characters of Pixar's The Incredibles, this highly interactive and Im- imaginatively produced game show will dare families to take on an incredible obstacle course with over-the-top physical challenges themed to the powers of the Parr family heroes and their good friend, Fred. Ozone, <laughs> uh, no capes required. Oh, and Nimone will be very right, happy yeah, about no that. Yes, yes. So here's the things you can do there. Uh, heroes will first test their strength by busting through a brick wall, a brick wall, <laughs> not really brick, brick wall during Mr. Incredible's power punch. Uh, Jack Jack's whack a rack will pit <laughs> players against Rocky and his raccoon friends, who you might remember from The Incredibles right. too. One of the best parts of The Incredibles yeah. too. <laughs> Only the most flexible families will conquer the twists and turns of Elastigirl Stretcherama. <laughs> uh, family speedsters will be the front runners of Dash's Mad Dash Mayhem. And Violet's force field swing will send supers soaring across a, quote, lava field, end quote. Not really a lava <laughs> field, they want to point out. It won't be really going over lava. Uh, the strong finish includes a cool down on Frozone's ice slide where heroes will ascend to the highest peak and slide down the icy slopes to victory. It looks really cool. I mean, it, it is kind of a blow up, um, you know, obstacle course. Right. But I love the way they're going to do it because this space is not going to be that all day long. They're, for this event, they will put this in, inflatable thing in place and you get to do it. Nice. And then during the rest of the time during that space, uh, they were going to ha- they'll have you know like ping pong and shuffleboard right. and all sorts of things all within an enclosed area whereas as opposed to what it's like now where a lot of these ships they have it out on deck taking right. up space somewhere so right. I love kind it's of really hot too. right <laughs> uh, and they also have some great observation areas so you can sit there and and you can show up and you can route your family on through these events and check them out and everything Sweet. so yeah. uh, it really looks cool I like it I think it's a it's a great idea for the yeah Disney Wish. yeah it's a great addition to have you know some activities that you know really get the family's blood moving there Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. speaking about getting the blood moving (laughs) we now know the theme to run disney's springtime race weekend which we believe we will be attending so this is fun again to the disney parks blog they say we're about four months from the debut of their new run disney springtime surprise weekend and they share the details about the surprise part again that race is going to be a changing theme every year is what they've plotted it out Mm -hmm. as being so this year it's this Next year, it could be something completely different. So they say this inaugural event borrows from some all-time favorite run Disney events and combines them with exciting new twists and turns for a totally unique experience. The theme will be Yestermorrow. (laughs) So looking back at the history, of course. And when March 31st through April 3rd, 2022 rolls around, runners will embark on a nostalgic four-day race weekend that will have them reliving wonderful past run Disney memories while creating new ones during the Walt Disney World Resort 50th anniversary celebration. Now, here are the races you get to choose from. And these, again, are races that they've all run in the past, but they haven't run in a long time. The inaugural Springtime Surprise Weekend will feature... The Expedition Everest 5K on March 31st, 2022. This race will once again feature a night time. Nice. Night time. Not night time as in, you know, in the morning before the sun comes up. No, this is like <laughs> it's starting at 10 p.m. Nighttime 5K combined with a scavenger hunt. But this time, the scavenger hunt will be conducted during the 5K. <laughs> this is the race that we're probably going to do. One, yes. we like the nighttime aspect right. to it. Um, we also like, we love scavenger hunts. Right, yeah. So <laughs> this sounds like a lot of fun. We got some friends that we're tabbing. We might do that as well. So I'm um, really excited about this I one. know, it's just... Uh, it's- Love, love, love this idea. Right. And I love that they spaced it. So this is going to happen on the night of the 31st. Well, they give you a day in between. And then on April 2nd of 2022, the Race for the Taste 10K will take place. The event will mirror the 10K from the past. But now the race will celebrate the newest attraction at Walt Disney World Resort, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure at Epcot. So 
That's a lot of fun as well. And finally, this is one that people have been calling out for for a long time, although I think they wished it had been a nighttime race. It's going to be a morning race, but still really exciting. The Tower of Terror 10 miler will take place on April 3rd, 2022. Uh, race will be tw- a 10 miler, but again, it'll be run in the morning mm-hmm. instead of at night, but based around the theme of the Tower of Terror, which That's is a so lot of cool. fun. Yeah. I would really love to do that one too, right. but I don't think I'll be able to do both but we'll see how it goes when we as we start plotting this out so um also they're going to have a sunrise uh yoga again in front of cinderella's castle at magic kingdom park during that weekend and there will be a challenge where you can run all three races um for a single price to get a special medal if you run all three and that is 19.3 miles similar to what it would be if you were running the uh, the challenge, except for it's three days, but mm-hmm. if you're running the 10K and half marathon challenge, right. that is also 19.3. So uh, similar in that regard. Now, registration for the Springtime Surprise Weekend begins on December 9th at rundisney.com. So take a look at that. We'll be there and we would love to have you all run with us yeah. if you're going to come to that event too. Because I we, believe me, I think we're going to do that one. Um, let us know and we will all get out there together and have a meetup. That'd be a yeah, lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Especially since it's in the evening, it's going to be easier than trying to meet up at you know 2 30 in the yeah. morning because you're trying to get transportation at three and for sure yeah with getting with everybody else you'd have to go earlier so yeah that's nighttime's fun so. nighttime is going to be fun but the whole race weekend is going to be fun and all the race weekends coming up are going to be fun and finally i just wanted to get out there really quickly uh web slingers at disney california adventure park has now put a pause on only accessing it through a virtual queue so for right now Uh, If you're going to Disney California Adventure Park, it is a standby queue only. Now, they did say they may bring back the virtual queue as necessary Mm -hmm. for it. But no, right now, you don't need to get up at 7 a.m. and access a virtual queue for web slingers. So I think that's more in preparation for Genie Genie. Genie Plus coming to Disneyland soon. So that's it for the Disney stories of the week. However, we never leave you without giving you some sort of tip that might help you on your next vacation. And we always start with Michelle. One, because she's awesome, wonderful, (laughs) gorgeous, intelligent. (laughs) She has the best research. She has the best lists, but she definitely has the very best tip. So let's get to it. Here's Michelle's tip of the week. Oh gosh, you're so nice. Um, So this is really, if you're planning to do a large party trip to, uh, whether it be Disney World, Disneyland, or Alani, then, you know, it would behoove you. Can I use that word? That is very well done. Thank you. Behoove you to um, access the Disney Group's getaway team. And you can go online and you'll get the, the phone number to contact them based on which location you're going to. And then you and your family can have access to a, like a dedicated cast member um, to assist you with booking and planning the trip and maybe even be able to provide you depending on, you know, d- various things, whether it's the size of your group or the time of year, et cetera, um, some discounts for ticket prices and room rates it's just definitely worth you know considering and i know like when somebody's going through like planning a wedding or something like that obviously um you get connected with this but it doesn't have to be if you can be a group of 10 or more that's going to be staying on property then this is something that could really help you um one, make things easier, but to feel like you have somebody that's really helping guide you in that planning process. So uh, again, you just uh, go online and look for the Disney Group Getaways, and they have the phone numbers listed there depending on which location you're going to be vacationing. Good stuff. Yeah, definitely important stuff. Uh, Good to to know going in and get some help going in for sure. So thank you. Good job, Michelle's tip. Always the best (laughs) tip. Uh, My tip this week really quickly, as we were discussing earlier in the day, um, the Run Disney race for this weekend got a little soggy for some of the participants. (laughs) And uh, this is something I've recommended in the past. I'm going to recommend it again. Uh, If you have a Run Disney race scheduled, whether it be the Uh, Walt Disney World races, the princesses, the springtime surprise, whatever, um, pay attention to the weather reports going in so you can kind of plot out uh, what you're going to be wearing on the day. I mean, it could be hot. It could be cold. And sometimes we've been out there when it's been really, really chilly during these. I think these were really chilly, as a matter of fact. There could be rain, obviously. Um, There's lots of different things that you may need to prepare for. So you know that going in when you're planning out your cosplay, your outfit right. to run these races. One, know the distance and know what you're going to be wearing that you're going to be wearing it for three miles 
or six miles mm-hmm. or 13 miles. Right. Be prepared for that. And but also the weather itself. You know, you don't want to be wearing something super heavy if it's gonna be hot, or something that'll absorb a lot of liquid and, and weigh you down if it's raining right. or whatever. So maybe you have one outfit and maybe you have a backup outfit depending on what the weather may be. Basically pay attention to the weather going in and you'll right. just be a better suited for that race day, you'll have a much more comfortable race experience as well. And um, I would always recommend this, no matter what the weather is, um, bring a pair of extra socks. um, Because if it's soggy, if you get hot, whatever, a change of socks can help you immensely, especially for some of these longer races. Good point, yes. So that's it for this week. Uh, Next week, well, we've passed a lot of information over these last couple weeks. Mm -hmm. So we, we, not that this hasn't been fun, it's been a lot of fun, but it's also been a lot of information. Next week, pure fun we're just going to have a really fun episode uh better yet it's going to be a musical one too so we'll be this is a topic i've been wanting to do for a long time i'm excited that we're going to get to do this next week (laughs) that i didn't move it again (laughs) (laughs) we'll be talking all about disney songs that get stuck in our heads but we don't mind it (laughs) <laughs> and of course, it'll be a five favorite list, five ish right. favorite. We'll probably hit a ton of songs, and we want you to be a part of that as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and then uh, we'll apologize in advance because after this episode, we expect that these will all be stuck in your heads as well. Right, exactly. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we appreciate that you joined us today. In the future, you can find us most everywhere you get podcasts. However, the very best place to find us is on our own website, HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. And while you're there, please sign up for our newsletter. Please sign up for the newsletter. Just not the way to be involved in the Hyperion Adventures podcast world. You can also be that way, or you can also do that, I should say, uh, by following us on social media. We're on Twitter at Hyperion Podcast, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. Uh, if you're on Facebook, Come on over and join us on our Hyperion Adventurers Facebook group. Just a great space for positive Disney energy. Yeah, yeah we'd love to have you join us. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, if you want to check us out on YouTube, we're there. You can just do a search for Hyperion Adventures Podcast. Hit subscribe. You'll know whenever we have a new video. And if you ever want to contact us for any reason, please hit us up at our Gmail account, Hyperion Adventures Podcast at gmail.com. Right. We love hearing from you. And we also love if you share that this uh, podcast exists to your friends and family. Yep. Tell a friend and they'll tell two friends and they'll tell two friends and so on and so <laughs> Where's on. The and so Where's the hook? Where's the hook? Where is the hook? <laughs> That's it. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Hyperion Adventures podcast. We look forward to sharing some time with you again next week. Until that time, I'm Tom. I'm Michelle. And we hope that you have a magical week. Bye. Bye.